I want to, there's so many things that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you, uh, and you can tell me to fuck off at any point. I don't swear. <laughs> you can tell me to bugger off at any point. No, I'd be happy to tell you to fuck yeah. off. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and the light is good to hear. Some cheap sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Despite a little thing, yeah. Finally, you won't lay in the phone to find Levi's in her sweater county. She had a West Coast strut that was sweet as molasses. But he knocked me out with a cheap sunglasses. <laughs> that's that's the guitar and I want to play it so bad before uh before you before you split. This is Yep, 7297537. I bought this when I was 15. Really? A wine red Gibson Deluxe. Uh and I'd ordered a gold standard. But it was, it was Belfast in the 1970s and you got what you got. <laughs> right. So I waited about 6 months, you know, and, and uh, get off the school bus once a week and go to the the shop, music shop, and you got anything yet? And then one, one Friday afternoon, it was well, good news and bad news. We got a Les Paul in, and it's neither gold nor a standard. And uh, the deluxe, you know, I it was okay, but I, I'm a huge Thin Lizzy fan. And Scott Gorham at the time, the classic Lizzy lineup, Gorham and Robert on guitar, and Scott was playing uh, a Sunburst Les Paul deluxe, and I thought. Good enough for Scott Gorham. It's got to be good enough for me. So I took the guitar. And then I, I went about modifying every single aspect of it, um, except the wood. That's the only thing that's original. So I took sandpaper to it that night. That uh, night? That very night, yeah. Because I Because Rory Gallagher was my first guitar hero. And first album, first concert was Rory. And I'd moved on to Les Paul players. And, did, so you know, did you start on a Strat? Well, I had a Strat copy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, at a Telecaster Thin Line. Uh huh. Don't know how I, it's a long story how I ended sure. up with that, but <laughs> it, it wasn't really my choice. But at least you know it was, it's a higher end guitar. It was better than a, a cheap Japanese copy. It was actually a real Fender Thin Line, you know. And, um, it just wasn't very rock and roll, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but then you know I'd moved on to the Lizzie guys and and Gary Moore, who's my ultimate guitar hero, and and Paul Kossoff and all my Guitar heroes were Les Paul players, right. so, so I gravitated towards that. And anyway, this is it. So I, I, but because Rory was my first guitar hero, I've just had a thing about patina on guitars. I don't like new shiny right. guitars, and uh, so I took, and I was never a fan of the wine red color, and I took sandpaper to it, and then eventually I had it painted this matte black. So you took ago. it down all the way to the maple to the maple top? No, 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 no. I, I just dulled the finish on it. Gotcha. Yeah. 
That's a pretty ballsy move for a 15-year-old kid to go uh, well, well, I knew I wasn't straight going to, at a guitar like that. I knew I wasn't going to sell it or anything. You know, I was going to keep it. So, but, well. so you've had that since you were 15. So you've had it for 20 years. Yeah, at least 20 years. I think maybe 18. You know? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Epiphone are just doing a, a, a... They sent me a couple of prototypes. They're doing a model of it. And they've done a really good version of it. So, so that's very flattering, you know, that they would want to do that. And, but it is a very special instrument because this is the guitar I learned how to play on. Like up to the point I got this guitar, I really was just, you know, learning a few chords and stuff. And it was right. on this instrument that I, I put all the R's in. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this fretboard, you know. And uh, so I, I had a band. I formed a band when I was 16 called Sweet Savage. And, and we wrote original music. We recorded a little bit. We toured. We opened for a bunch of bands, mostly Thin Lizzy. We opened... <laughs> maybe 40, 50 shows for Thin Lizzy over the yeah. years, all through Ireland and England. And, uh, you know, we were, we were kind of, we were very like Metallica. We were kind of like Thin Lizzy meets Motorhead, you know. Right. Uh, and we were very influenced by punk too, because punk was a big thing, you know, coming up then. And, and that's kind of what, what kind of flowed into this whole new wave of British heavy metal thing, you know, that, that we were feeding off of. Um, so there's a lot of nervous energy there, you know, and, and our drummer, especially Davy Bits, you know, like if we if we wrote a song that was 100, 120 beats per minute, when we played it live, it was 150, 150 it was like, <laughs> one, two, three, go, you know? And, you know, it's a Metallica eventually covered a Sweet Savage song called Killing Time on their Garage Days album, which we we're very flattered about because then we finally actually made some money. <laughs> we, finally, we finally made a few bob from those Sweet Savage songs. Um, yeah, so anyway, so this guitar, you know, and I, I didn't play it for many, many years. And through the 80s, I went, uh, I was telling you earlier, I got seduced by the whole hot rod strat thing. I had Charvels, and they were great instruments. And, you know, the Floyd, I, I just, you know, once once you hear Eddie Van Halen play in the early 80s, you had to have a Floyd Rose, you right. know, and you had to have a hot rod strat. And, um, and it wasn't until many years later when I was, um, when I joined Def Leppard and I was in the studio doing the first, a studio album with Leopard, my first studio album, which was Slang, and that was in the mid '90s. We were writing and recording that, and and I realized, you know, that I had a couple of Les Pauls there, and actually Phil had a really Phil Collins had a really nice Les Paul with him, and I ended up playing that for most of the record. And from that point on, I've I've played a fixed bridge guitar again, mostly a Les Paul. So this guitar I brought out of retirement when I started the Last in Line project because it it's just perfectly appropriate for it. I mean, I wrote toured recorded holy diver the whole tour with this guitar it was the only guitar i had uh, i sorry I, I tell a lie i did have a strat as a backup but i think i used it once for one song when i broke a string right. but other than that i played this guitar the entire holy diver tour so um it seems appropriate to play it for the last in line project you know for you to hear you tell the story and to, like watch your eyes light up about being so excited about getting to play with you and you felt like I get to play with my childhood idols. That's I mean, yeah, it was a privilege. I would have done it for free. I didn't tell them that. I right. almost did it for free because all the money I spent <laughs> on the year. But, um, you know, it's I just I, I'm very very fortunate in my life. Been very blessed. I've played with so many great bands and great musicians. And, uh, and the moment I get to play in two exceptional bands, Def Leppard and Last in Line, you know, it's just. It's tiring because I, I do take on a heavy workload. There's times when I'm sitting in some horrible, horrible hotel. Sure. You know, just thinking, what am I doing here? The monotony of But tour. then you get on stage and you play. I mean, the joy that it brings, like, especially with Last of Mine here, these last couple of shows. You know, I met a few people last night after the show. Uh, we played in Long Island. And they were just so excited about hearing those songs and, and seeing me and Vinny play them again. You know, there's only Vinny and I left in the original band, obviously, but um, people love it. I mean, you forget being a musician in a band. You you forget, or, or maybe, you know, we never know in the first place just what it, the music can mean to people. You know? Well, what Thin Lizzy meant to you. Exactly, yeah. Well, I suppose I do know. What am I talking it's, about? It's, it's, it means <laughs> exactly, exactly that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't think that way about anything that... I've been involved in, but apparently, you know, to some people it means a lot. So right. It's a, that's, that's exciting, you know, that makes it worthwhile to go back to your dingy hovel of auto shells.